Steven, you need to be light.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the heavens
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you call all holy scripture to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them. Read, mark, learn, and intimately digest them. That we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 7 and 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their drags. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hasting fast. The sound of the Lord, the sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness a day of trumpet blast and a battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like blind. Because they have, not si because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood should be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 90. We will read it responsibly by half verse. Lord, you have been our refuge from one, one generation, generation to another. another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from, from age, age to age you are our God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like, like a watch, watch in the night. night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up like the wind. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because, afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength even eighty. 
Yet the Son of Man is not labor nor sorrow, for they pass away quickly, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. The epistle is taken from 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, the 1st to the 11th verse. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness, so then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be as when a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and instructed his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded it with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had, two, who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came 
and he settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and less slave, you knew, did you? Then I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, threw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and grudging of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to God Christ. Stand up and speak to you on investment. Let us pray. Make us sober, merciful Savior, that we read, mark, and even what it digest your word. That your word would teach us to invest our time, 
our treasures, and our talents. Amen. Amen. We all love to invest. When it comes to investment, we all try to ensure that we retire from this earthly pilgrimage having some good benefits that ensures that we are well taken care of. Our children go to the best of schools. Our medical benefits are all in tight. And we can have time and movement that we can relax and enjoy the comfort of our investment. Likewise, whenever we invest, we are somehow mindful about the markets. Because there are times our earthly investment might crumble. I recall many years in Africa, I heard about the financial meltdown. How millions of people lost their life savings. People's homes and everything got lost. And people started all over and again. But this morning, the gospel lesson draws our attention to our spiritual investment. The parable does not justify a gospel of economic prosperity. It does not give us a clue on investing things that bring our economic reward. But instead, it challenges believers to emulate the master by using our time, our treasures, and our talents for God's kingdom. Yes, church, this parable this morning is located in Jesus' eschatological discourse where he instructs his disciples to endure through difficult times and to live in anticipation of the Lord's return. On last Sunday we heard the gospel about preparation because the coming of Christ is certainly uncertain. This morning again, we are hearing about Christ coming that is again on the certain. His return is unannounced. His return calls for discipline and hard work. His return calls for loyalty and commitment. Like all the parables in the Synoptic Gospels, this section exemplifies the certainty of the Lord's return and how we as disciples and followers of Christ are to live in the meantime. The teaching of the talents recalls the parable of the faithful and the wise slaves who continues to do their work of the master until the master comes. Although the master is delayed, we are to work. Although the master return is uncertain, we have to be on the alert. Although the master has not given any clues when he will return, we have to invest on what is entrusted to us. Like the preceding two parables, the return of the master is certain. But the timing, my dear brothers and sisters, is unknown. After a long absence, he discovers what each seven has done with his property. My question to each, of, each one of us this morning, can we be trusted? How 
are we managing the lost property? When I talk about property, I don't mean infrastructure. I'm talking about your lives. I'm talking about your gifts, your talents, your resources, your treasures. I am talking about those things that God has given you as blessing. Your stewardship towards God. How are we managing them? The first two slaves do business with the master talents and double the income. Although the first slave earned more than the second, each has done remarkably well with what has been given to them. They have performed according to their potential and they have been faithful to do what the master requires of them. The master's response is the same. He commends the slaves for being good and faithful. He cheers them up and entrusts them with more authority and invites them into the fullness of joy. Yes, church, the third servant is now fortunate. Hmm. We see mismanagement. We see excuses. We see the blame game. And we see accusations. I know that you are a difficult man. Wanting what you did not invest in. I know you are very difficult to please. I know how quarrelsome you can be at times. Having worked with you all these while, I knew you were found fault. So I maintain your investment. It reminds me of my little son, my third son, Alan. He just turned seven. And your mother tells him, Alan, please bring me water. He says, Mommy, I'm tired. Ask your other son. <laughs> and she looked at me and said, Father, that's the message you're tired. <laughs> Invest in your other children. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And the play game continues. I know you require things that you did not invest in. And because I was afraid, I buried them. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters. Are you in the blame game? Oftentimes, we don't find excuses. Oftentimes, are we not for wasting our talents? Our God-giving cause? How many times do we run to choir practice and we are cognizant? Of the talents we have to gain. How many times do we sit in the corporate world and realize that God has been a blessing unto us? And we too should be a blessing to humanity. I know you are a man who reaps where he does not sow and gather what he has not scattered to see. He aggressively seeks to expand his estate. And takes whatever he can to make profit. I know you are a boss of dollarization. You love the dollars. All that concerns your master is money. And the master got irritated. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters. The third seven admits that he was afraid to lose the master's money. To protect himself, he buried the talent in the ground. This might seem all to us, but mind you, in the Jewish history, it was okay to bury your treasure. Yes, church, the master is furious. He had entrusted this seven with a portion of his property in order that the seven will use his abilities and help increase his fortune. The slave was too afraid to take risk. And risk 
is a part of business. The master expected a servant to continue his business. Two servants were formed to be faithful and they are rewarded. Their faithfulness had increased the master's wealth and expanded his estate. In this literary setting and context, Jesus tells the story to his disciples to prepare them for the days ahead when their faith will be tested. Jesus is speaking to us this morning to be prepared on the lookout because our faith will be tested. Whatsoever God has given us, he expects us to give a report. Yes, church? A story is told of a man in Liberia. This is a borrowed story. I wanted to marry. He worked with the oil company and his family said, it's time you bring your wife in the home. But when he started in the United Kingdom, coincidentally, he dated two women. So he said to himself, these women are so nice to me. They have been hospitable over the years. I will have to Cross checked and see who becomes my wife. So he called the first lady about 12 noon on a Saturday. Are you home? Yes, ma'am, I'm home. I'm coming. And when he drove, he pretended he wasn't well. And he held his side and walked in. She said, What happened? I'm not well. I said, No, you can't stay here any longer. I don't want you staying here before the worst happens. You have to go home. And she ushered him out. Not even saying good bad, he drove. And he called a second lady and went to the house. And the way he walked, she got concerned. Said, what happened? She said, I'm not feeling well. She said, loud on the couch, went for something hot, brought some medication from over the counter, gave it, and said to him, I'm afraid because of your condition, you cannot drive to go home. You got to spend the night. She used the time of care given. She used the time of being hospitable. She used her time of being compassionate. How many of us are sensitive to the needs of others? How many of us can broaden our eyes to see those that are hungry around us? How many of us can look within the walls of Trinity, D.C. and say, I have to do something for God? How many of us can walk in our community and say, I can be the change to impact my community, church? Yes, church, what does faithfulness look like in time of waiting? In Matthew gospel, faithfulness is emanating the ministry of Jesus. Jesus has announced the arrival of God's kingdom by feeding the hungry, by curing the sick, blessing the meek, and serving the least. This phrase, each according to his ability, contains a liberating message for the poor and for ourselves. This gospel reading suggests that we are made in the image of God, the Omega Day. Therefore, each of us have value and gifts to use for ourselves, our families, and our community. This morning, I've encouraged us. The poor we see around us have values and potential that can be empowered to tap their unique gifts and abilities to create a better life. We can create an enabling environment that enhances economic stability for all so that the dependent syndrome will reduce. Our talents can reduce the rise of poverty, homelessness, and build a sustained local communities in some of our areas that are impoverished. What are you using your investment for? Our investment should be used 
for reconciliation. Our investment shall be used and not be so divisive. We should use our time to bring healing and forgiveness to God's people and the wider community. Our investment should be used to build bridges of love and brotherhood and not walls of separation and isolation. The songwriter says, if I can help somebody along this way, if I can help somebody as a pass along this path, if I can cheer somebody with a word of encouragement, if I can show somebody who is going the wrong way, then my living church will not be in vain. Amen. This morning we see the prophet Zebaniah presenting the picture of God searching through Israel. Searching through somebody's life. Which gave her the impression that the spiritual darkness of the city. That the woman searching for a gold corn in Luke 15, 8. The light of the candle shines in all darkness. Christ this morning is searching our lives. He's searching. Just as a good driver driving requires attention on the road ahead. Living well for God requires attention. Living well for Christ requires preparation. Living well for Jesus calls for a sober reflection. In the days of the Thessalonians, in the church of Thessalonica, there is this debate on the return of the Lord. There is the question how soon is God coming? But we are called to be sober, we are called to be attentive. We are called to be in the right place at the right time. We are called to read, mark, and in order to digest the word of God. Let us, as a church, invest our time, our treasures, and our talents because we are the custodian of humanity. And whenever we do good, Christ is glorified. Amen. 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 faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that have seen and have seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and unmade, one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us is by salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sin, he was crucified on the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, for the Lord was with the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and received at the right hand of the Father. 
we will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom of our Lord. For the believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is devoted and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. found on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people, especially the people of Liberia, Libya, Malaysia, Mexico, Mozambique, Myanmar, Nepal, Niger, and their daily and those in their daily life and work. For Donald, our president, Muriel, our mayor, and for this community, the nation, and the world. For places affected by terror, victims of fires hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes, and for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For the victims of violence, drugs, homelessness, those suffering from serious illness, and all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For Christ Church, Quentin Parish, Christ Church, La Prada, Christ Church, Wayside, for the partnering in ministries of service and justice for greater impact in our community, and for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who remain in this world, for all who seek a cure. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Mary Ann and Chilton, our bishops, for John, our priest, for Robert, Eleanor, and Wesley, our associates, for Alan, Jean, and Olaf, our seminarians, and for our bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those who are sick, shut in, and hospitalized, please add your own petition. Hear us, Lord. We thank you all. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Please add your own thanksgivings. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Olive, Mary Alice, 
Nathaniel, Ivory, and Matthew, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please add your own petition. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We will trust you. O oh God, we thank you for trusting us for the work of your ministry, strengthening our resolve. Give us courage that we may ever hold fast to this blessed truth. And invest in this life, in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left unknown. And so hold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the raising Christ be always with you. And also with you. Every night.